Our next presenter, Kieran Nugent, is going to take us to Ireland, and I have no idea what the first part of his title means, but I'm sure he'll explain it to us. I, I have no idea myself. I asked my friend, who's a fluent speaker, and thank you very much. For, uh, the timekeeping this afternoon is much better than when I was chairing yesterday, so I'm very impressed. Uh, thank you to the Foundation, and, and thank you to, to, to you. Uh, a small fire is better, is the translation, and we use the Irish language because <laughs> A lot of the issues we're dealing with in Ireland relate to tradition uh, of people in our rural areas on, on the West Coast. Um, Ireland uh, has a reputation for wet, damp, cold weather. We have warm hearts, but our weather is wet and cold. And our fire regime is very much influenced by the Atlantic weather. And in spring, uh, this can change, can change very rapidly. And the air flows that normally bring wet, moist conditions can bring dry, more, more arctic dry conditions coming from the continent of Europe. Our fire index, you see in the, in, the, in the diagram on the bottom, is a fraction of the indices that we see in the rest of Europe. So as a consequence, our fires are more subtle. Our fire regime is quite difficult to pin down. This is our main objective at the moment. And it relates to our upland uh, management, our upland vegetation. Uh, People here from northwest of Spain, from north of Portugal, maybe would recognise the conditions that we have in terms of vegetation. The species are very similar, uh, but we're dealing with high moisture conditions. On the west coast, some of these areas can have rainfall up to 4,000 millimetres, and it uh, creates ideal growing conditions, mild temperatures. I'm going to talk about three particular areas. I I'm based in Kerry with Mike and James from Kerry Fire and Rescue Service are in the audience and uh, the punctures here. We're in Kerry. Doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, it, in the southwest and we also have colleagues of ours in Northern Ireland which is a separate state, a separate jurisdiction, it's part of the United Kingdom. We, we are all on the island of Ireland. Uh, working in, in different ways with the same conditions and the same problems. And our colleagues in West Cork, in the extreme southwest of the country, are dealing with, uh, 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 at a local level, very, uh, very small. So most of our fires happen in upland areas. In the last six years, we've seen lots of fires. We've had 75,000 hectares of land burned that we know about. We've had lots of fires that we haven't measured because we don't have the systems at this point to, to allow for that. We use a lot of satellite imaging, which is constrained in turn by the weather conditions, the short duration of fires. Using the MODIS imagery and the MODIS systems, we only capture a small percentage of our total fires, which makes the uh, identification of our fire regime, the timing and location, a little bit more difficult. But we're, we're at a point now where we know enough about our regime to start mitigating this and to start taking, uh, taking actions. Our main issue is fuel. In these, land, in these uh, upland areas, particularly in our national parks, in the Natura designated spaces that we have, we have a lot of land in Ireland is designated for Natura. The land management techniques, the land management knowledge is gone. The people who are managing some of these areas simply don't know how to do this anymore. We have a disconnect in our land management. In our fire service, we have a structural fire service. We don't have BRIF, we don't have the GRAF units, we don't have specialized wildland firefighters. These are structural firefighting resources being applied to a completely different set of circumstances. Our objectives to, to, to start are simply to learn, to develop the networks, to develop the capacity to learn for ourselves. And this obviously involves the international aspects of it. But most particularly, we need the land management knowledge and the, the fuel management techniques. And we've learned these here in Catalonia. We've learned these from our UK colleagues. And we've very quickly learned how to put these together into, into, into a, a response. We've been very lucky that there's a lot of voluntary guidance. In the absence of national policy, we have simply adopted the FAO guidance for developing countries. It's worked. And we've developed our own codes of practice for, for burning vegetation. And again, we've gone to the UK, we've seen our colleagues in Wales, in South Wales, Craig Hope is here, teaching us how to burn and demonstrate burning in wet conditions. 
This is one of the most critical points for me in my fire career, learning how to burn, that we can say on a day we're going to have a fire demonstration and we can actually do that independent of the weather conditions. Coming here to Catalonia, again with my Northern Irish colleagues, to learn how to apply fire in a professional way, how to do this in a scientific uh, way, and taking those techniques home and learning how to use those in our own landscape has been critical. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom, and they have the UK operational doctrines. And people have, from Northumberland and so on have developed, my colleague in, in, in the Forestry Commission, a lot of risk management things. And they have taken those and applied those in an Irish landscape, which for us is amazing because they are using the same techniques you use here in Catalonia and in Spain. They have this whole system now in, in the eastern side of Northern Ireland, in the Morn Mountains, looking at a landscape uh, level approach and looking at critical control points and burning these, and very complex operations. This is the water supply for Belfast City, and this is a critical control point that they've burned. Following the fire, they're following up with upland grazing, prescribed grazing, and they have a, a, an ongoing process to do this. In Southern Ireland, we don't have the resources to do this at this point. We have a lot of problems with landowners who burn, excuse me, and the tradition of burning is very, very strong. We cannot stop a tradition. In these areas, you just cannot do that. So we try to transpose what we've learned here in, 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 in the continent into our traditional uh, practice and with the guidance that we have. And using local level, ground up resources, we are using the farmers to do the burning, asking them to burn in a different way. This is the Sheep's Head Peninsula in West Cork. This, where the Kilocrohan area is, we had a 1,000 hectare fire here in March last year. And the landowners involved, we've now decided to take those and educate them in better modern prescribed fire techniques. We accept that you have a tradition of burning, but your techniques just, just don't stack up. We have to improve the techniques. And it's great to see from, from Italy and France in the previous uh, presentations, the same approach is being applied. It kind of gives me great comfort that my, my colleagues are going in, in the right direction. Simply to give the farmers the skills to do what they need to do. These are skills that have been handed, are uh, traditions that have been handed down over long periods, and to upgrade those t techniques is very, very important, and to empower the local communities to use fire safely in their own landscape. We have uh, over 1,000 farm advisors in, in the in southern Irish system and uh, of those we identified 14 who had any experience using fire professionally or had used fire as land management. So we have a huge task to upskill our advisory systems. We brought land use advisors from our state farm advisory agency to, uh, to Catalonia to be trained in these techniques. They are now handing those techniques on as part of their service to our farmers. So it's, it's been a fantastic thing. To be able to bring back things that we did in forestry, I'm a forester, to be able to bring these back to our systems and our sectors, things that we took for granted in the 1970s, we've forgotten how to do, control burning, uh, protective burning, bringing tactical fire techniques into the Irish fire services, again coming from uh, uh, the graph and this, this, this type of approach is very important for us. We have to have a conversation with our conservationists in Ireland. Uh, they want to ban the use of prescribed fire. They want to limit the use of prescribed fire techniques for us. They don't accept that fire has a place in our landscape. Um, I, I certainly don't agree with this. And we need to find the right language and we need to find the right tone of language to use with these groups uh, to have a conversation about how do we best bring fire into our landscapes. And this is something that's going to be quite, uh, quite a difficult challenge. It's the most difficult challenge for us. We have one of the shortest prescribed fire, legal prescribed fire seasons in Europe. Our season will end in four weeks' time. With our weather conditions, it's very unlikely that we will have suitable windows within the next month, the four weeks, to conduct the type of operations we need. And again, uh, we have to have these conversations in, in this landscape. Uh, to, to try and change the legislation and make it better, uh, make it easier to use these techniques again in, in these uh, moisture dominated landscapes, if that's, that makes sense. I'll skip through uh, 
we're very much uh, inspired by what you do. And we see in Northern Ireland the techniques being adopted directly in. People are looking at what they've learned in Catalonia and they're doing this on, on the ground now. The fire service have the tactical fire uh, knowledge. The land managers, the people in the, in the yellow jackets, they've bought the same equipment. They've, they're very much adopting this directly. And it's, it's fantastic to see this, that, that, they can, that they can take the techniques, take the mentalities, and apply these into a completely different type of, 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 of condition, a completely different landscape. And for us in the south, uh, we're also inspired by, by what you do. And again, the equipment is coming from this part of the world, and the mentality is coming from here. And with a different, this is not a firefighter, this is a, an Irish farmer is adopting these approaches, adopting these techniques. And again, to thank everybody in the community for, for the help that we've had uh, from the different countries has been uh, to enable us to make a rapid uh, adaptation of these techniques has been very, very important to us. And we want to say thank you uh, uh, for, for this. Thanks, Stefan. Okay. Thank you, Kieran. Are there any questions? We have time for questions. Any heresy? One. Microphone, please. Do I need the interpreter, Caroline? He's coming. Oh, great. Carolina Stowe for Wageningen University. What I it's almost the end of the conference, and, and what, I'm think, what, I'm, what I've been hearing a lot is um, collaborating with shepherds, collaborating with uh, indigenous people um, to burn together. And this is not so much of a question, but more like a comment maybe, or a, or a thought, because in a way it's about learning, the us learning from the locals, and the people who've been doing this for a really long time. But on the other hand, it's, it's what you're saying, they're burning and uh, you're learning them how to do it in an updated way. So that's a very fine line between um, imposing what we think is right and then learning from what they think is right. So maybe it is a question, like how, how do you deal with that very fine line? We, we treat the question about their tradition the same as we treat the questions about our fire regime. What do they do? And we go and we ask them in focus groups, what do you do? When do you do it? What are the conditions that you like to burn in? What does an ideal day to burn look like? And they, ask, they answer. We open a conversation like this. And they give us this information. And we simply try to fit our techniques onto as best we can. Some of the things they do are just unacceptable. They are burning in the highest risk conditions because they're using direct ignition. They're lighting the vegetation directly. Um, by using a drip torch, they can light vegetation that, that has more, more moisture. It's safer. And they can lengthen the opportunities that they have to burn safely are, are increased, again, by the techniques. But we spend a lot of time asking and querying and this questioning and conversation also gives us a lot of influence. They like the fact that we are interested in what they do, mm -hmm. that we've bothered to ask, gives us a, a lot of, of influence with, with, with these groups. And it's been very, very important for us. It's, it's central, really, to, to what we do. Yeah. So it's more like, sh it's more sharing than imposing. That, that you, in these landscapes, you don't, you cannot impose yeah. in these landscapes. They're not they're not the type of place that you can go policing. Uh, we had the Irish War of Independence in these landscapes. It, they're not, it doesn't work like that. And they're very deeply held traditions. And you mess with people's traditions at, at your peril. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kieran.